Gwinnett Woodworkers are filming here in Rob's shop today where our normal videos are done in, in a Peachtree Woodworking classroom on Saturday morning with our live audience and oftentimes the camera work and the background noise is not really conducive to YouTube videos so we're doing some video sessions here in Rob's shop uh, with a little bit more controlled environment. Okay we're back here in Rob's shop uh, and we're going to uh, still doing practicing on spindle turning and as we did earlier I made a had a block I was making beads and coves on. It doesn't take me very long to get bored of doing something like that. And even if you do it perfectly, it's something you're going to keep maybe for a, a few weeks and look at and eventually going to end up in the trash bin or the fire bin. So I want to show you, give you some ideas on things that you can make, still practice, and if it turns out, that's something you can keep and hang up and, and possibly become an heirloom. Uh, so what we're going to do this on this session is uh, we're going to make snowman. And, you know, so there's, there's really no, uh, no set pattern for a snowman. You know, they all come in all shapes and sizes. Um, you know, and growing up in, uh, in Iowa, when I was young, I had plenty of opportunity to, uh, to make snowman. So it's uh, doing this from memory. So this, this is, uh, you know, Rob just gave me a snowman that he made. Well, you can make snowmen of pretty much any shape you want. Uh, but the snowman that I did when I was growing up, you'd always put the heaviest ball and leave it laying on the ground and then you make a ball a little bit smaller and set it on top of there and then a little bit smaller than that and make for the head. So each, each, each one up is, is a little bit, each, each ball up is a little bit taller, but it, it looks like a snowman. And you can design different, different types of hats. Um, you can start coming around over here, we got like an Abe, Abe Lincoln hat and we got a, a Doughboy hat and you get the Grinch type of hat here and something here and then then if you get a chip in the brim then you can make something like this and turn it into a Shriner hat. So you can see those two there have ever had, had some problems with the brim so I just took the brim off and made it smaller. So that's what we're going to show doing in this session. So again spindle turning I got got a block it's about five and a half inches long. It, it came, out, came out of a two by four, two by 12, or some, some two by type material. So it's inch and a half thick, and then I just cut it to make an inch and a half square. I've already marked my centers, and we'll start out between centers. And the first thing to do is make it round. Always, number one rule, is always wear some sort of face protection. And we'll use the, the spindle roughing gouge to make this round. About a 45 degree bevel, wings are not swept back at all. And to start off with, we'll, we'll go to about, about 1,000 RPMs until we get the corners knocked off. And I'm just going to, you know, on the tool rest first, bevel rubbing, then bring the handle up until the cutter engages. And I'm doing basically a, a, uh, a peeling cut. I'm not going to give you a real good finish, but all I'm interested in doing now is just knocking off the corners. Okay, that should be sufficient for that. Now I'm going to put this in a, uh, in a chuck. So I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is form a tenon down here uh, to put it in the chuck. Uh, you could do it strictly between centers and then part it off and then just uh, you know, hand finish the, uh, the ends. But we'll do it in a chuck. It just makes it a bit more convenient and, and more flexible. So I'm going to, to, to make the tenon, I'm going to use a tool called a bedan. It's sort of a trapezoidal shape, about a 45 degree angle. And I'm just going to come in making a peeling cut. And, and get it down to a tenon 
this, the size to fit these uh, jaws in my uh, Nova Chuck. These are 35 millimeter Sorby jaws. And again, as I said earlier, the, the, I, like the, I like the Nova, jaw, Nova Chucks because you, the Sorby jaws and Nova jaws are completely interchangeable. So it gives you a, a, a large range or large selection of different types of jaws. So I got my caliper set to the diameter that I want to make the tenon to fit that, uh, those jaws. And as I said earlier in, in the other video that, you know, the cal as they come, they're pretty sharp points. So you want to file those points off so they're rounded so they don't catch. And we'll turn the speed up maybe about, about 1,500. And again, I'm just going to make a peeling cut on the, on the tool rest. Raise the handle until it starts cutting. And then just push it straight in. And as we said in the, in the other video, these, these jaws have got, this is a, they're not fully dovetailed, but they got a slight dovetail on the very beginning there. Just a little bit of a dovetail right there on that part right there. So I'm just gonna make a little relief cut on my tenon to accommodate that dovetail. Yeah, with, with, with the pine like this, it's not real critical. It wouldn't probably compress the fibers anyway, but on hardwood, to get a, because I want, I don't want it just touching up here. I want it, want it to grab the whole distance back here. So just putting that relief cuts in there just makes me a little bit easier to get, get contact over the whole length of the tenon. And also the tenon, I want, I want the, the, the face of the tenon, this edge here needs to sit on the, on the, the face of the jaws. So I want to make sure this face is, is, is perpendicular to the tenon so it re fully rests and gives me a good contact patch on the, on the face of the jaws. So I've got a, con a conventional grind skew. It's got straight, straight grind or straight bevel. And I'm going to hold, hold the, 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 uh, the skew flat on the tool rest, perpendicular to the bed of the lathe, and just come in. And I want to clean up the shoulder to make sure that it's completely straight. And then just cut a little bit of a dovetail, just about that much. OK, take it out of there. And when, when you're finished using the, uh, the live center, that's got nice sharp points. It'll make a nice divot in your elbow. So you always want to take that out and get it out of the way. And we'll knock the uh, the live center out. I mean the uh, drive spur out. You don't want to hold it up here. The sharp points could, when you knock it out, grab you know make dents in your hand. So I'll t hold onto it like that. And with the knockout bar, just, just do it a tap and uh, catch it. Okay, I'm going now. I, I took the drive. I got too energetic to take, and I, I still need this. I took it out too soon. And I just set it in there, and it's, it's loose right now. And I want to uh, bring the bring the tail stock up and put some pressure on it, so I got a good firm grip. So my so my so the wood is pressed down firmly against the face of my jaws, and then I can tighten it up. I'll go the right direction. And you always want to go around, and I, I go around and do each one a couple times. You know, I'm point this out. This this is a uh, you know cheap little uh, magnetic dish tray. Put that on on the side of your your uh, your lathe, and then you always got a place to to put your chuck, your chuck key. And you can put that on the side of the lathe, and you always, your chuck key is always right there where you want it. Okay, we're going to make this, finish making this round, and I'll, to do that I'll use the skew. Now this, this skew is, uh, it's uh, similar to what a Richard Raff and Allen laser skew is with, with a curve, with a radius uh, cutting edge on it. 
And since we got the corners knocked off, I'll go up to about 1800 RPMs. And I don't need a death grip like I see some people doing. Just so I'm just using this hand to hold it down the tool rest and, and using this hand to, to control the, uh, the cutting. So I'll go on the tool rest first, bring the bevel up, raise the handle and still it starts cutting. Until back there, see the bumping there? It's, it's pretty round up there, but it's, I've still got some corners back here. So that's a pretty good surface there. Okay, so now we can get rid of this, this drive center, or, or live center. And um, I want to come in and, and, uh, and clean off the bottom of that. I want to, you, you can just make the, uh, the bottom completely flat, but if you ever want to just stand it on, on the surface, if, if the wood should move after you finished it, uh, it, it could be hitting on the center and then it would, would wobble. So I like to, uh, you, know, you know, the reason I'm dishing it out, I'll show you here in just a minute, but I like to, uh, I like to put a detail on the bottom of the, of the base like that. Okay, so now I, I'm going to, uh, I don't have support from the live center, uh, but I want to have full access to clean off the bottom of it here. So I'm just going to take light cuts. And I'm, I've got my, my bevel is pointing in the direction that I want to cut, and I got the, the, the tip of the tool, it's what's going to be making contact, I got that vertical, so it doesn't want to skate. Then once, once I get a, a place to rest the bevel on, then I can rotate it around and get a better cutting action down here on the lower part of this wing. Okay, so that's pretty clean. So, so now I, I could just use a regular live center, uh, but I, I don't want, want I don't want to leave remnants of, of the live center. I don't want to leave these dents that you that you would have from that and the point and these pivots. I want to get rid of that, so I don't want to have that on there. So what I'm going to do is I, I still want to have tailstock support when I'm cutting the, the the snowman. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this live center or, and. Uh, you, this, this is a live center that, that comes, typically comes with a, a, a mini lathe. It comes with a solid point. Well, I don't want that point in there making a dent in there, so I need to take that point out. The, 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 the point is on a, on a taper. This one has been knocked out before, so it's not going to be very tight. So I can just knock it out. If, you're, if you get one that's new, it's going to take a lot more force than that to get it out. It's going to be in there pretty tight. But if you get a pin punch, which is the, the, the uniform dimension, you, you can put knock it out, you know, drill a hole in a block of wood to rest the, uh, the face of the bearing on, put it down, and, and you'll need to take a hammer, but you can knock that point out. See, it's got a bit of a taper on it. So I got the point out now, and that's what I'm going to use. So what I want to do is I want to mark, I want to put a little bit of recess in the bottom of there, like that. This, this is going to fit down in that recess to provide me tail sock support in that recess. So what I want to do now is make that recess. And I'm just going to bring the tailstock up and, uh, and, and mark where I want to cut. Just crank it in. See if that gives me enough of a dentation. Let let's turn the speed down. Turn this on. See if we can get a... Yeah, that's a bigger, bigger dent there. I'll move that in. Okay, so that gives me a line now. So now I want to I go ahead and recess that a bit. I'm cutting it just a little bit larger than that so that my cone will fit down in there and give me a good support. So 
So I want to be, be able to cut on, on that, the center of the thing so my tool rest is a bit too tall, too high. There, yeah, that's, that's lined up right with the center. Let me take this out of the way. Yeah, that give me access. Okay, so, so we'll go up to about 1800 or 2000 RPM. Now again, I want to, want to start my cut. I need to have the edge vertical. If the edge is not vertical, it was going to try to kick back. So I'll get in there and I got a little bit of, once, once, once I get a little bit of resting area, then I can rotate it around. Okay, now that's the, di that's the diameter of this, so I need to come outside of that just a little bit. So now if I want to clean that up, that edge up a bit, and come over, come this direction, need to lower the tool rest down. Now you should always, always turn the lathe off before you move the tool rest, but I don't really have a lot of danger here because this is, there's nothing for it to catch on. Uh, you know, there's no, no sharp edges are out of like you would on a bowl. Uh, so e even if it would happen to touch, it's not going to really do anything because it's really round. So I'm just going to come back in here this way just to clean up and give me a nice, nice smooth bottom. And then, then, then go over and get into the, go over and give me a, 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 a smooth corner there too for the, for the live center to fit into. Okay, that should do it. So now we'll test fit it. And I got, yeah, it's got a good, good purchase there. It'll, it's it's gonna rest right on the edges of that uh, taper. So then I've got, Got full support from the tail stock, and I'm not doing any any indentations there on my on my the bottom of my snowman. Now this one, I'm just going to show you how to make one that you could, just a plain wood with no finish on it. But if I was going to put a, a, a finish on this, so you know, clear uh, shiny type finish on it, you know, I, I would be I would sand the bottom and, and finish the bottom and, and get put whatever whatever finish I wanted to do on the bottom now, and I'd be done with the bottom. Like I said, there's no, there's no set proportions for a snowman. They come in all different sizes and shapes. But this is, this is a, the proportions. I sort of like that proportion there. I, I don't make the head quite as tall as that. But I, I like the proportion of, of, the, uh, of the, the, uh, the, the body and the torso. So I'm going to use this as a guide. I'm just going to lay it on there and just mark as that is the top of the body. Okay, we need to take uh, take you know get get some of this other wood out of the way up here. Get this out of the way so I can have room to start forming the body. So I got this caliper set a bit larger than than the than the size than the size of the torso. And I think I had that set to about I think it was an inch and an inch and an eighth. Yeah, I got it just about an inch, inch and an eighth is what I'm going to, I'm going to trim this all down to there to about an inch and an eighth to give me the size of the, tor of the, bar, the uh, torso. Okay, so I'm going to come back here and, and give me a guideline back here that dimension. Then once you get back here, I don't want to do it here because if I get down close to the size of the, of the torso, especially in soft wood like this, this being a peeling cut, it's gonna give, get a lot of tear out. So I'm gonna go back here, that's gonna be well above um, my finished snowman. Well above, so I'll come in right here, this will well above the finished snowman and get down to the desired dimension. Again, we're going to go up to about 1,800, 2,000 RPM, somewhere in that range. Now 
That's good. So that, that just gives me a guideline. So when I start trimming this down here, I just you have that as a guide to, uh, to trim down to. Okay, we'll use this continental type spindle gouge. It's just a bigger, you'll get, get, I can get a little more aggressive than, than, a, than a smaller spindle gouge so I can get more wood off in, in, a, in a hurry. So we're just going to come in here and just hog away this wood. Okay, so that's, that's the diameter of the torso. And then for the, uh, for the head, I want to go down to about 7 eighths of an inch. I think I've got this one set to, yeah, let's go down a little bit smaller. So that's going to, I'm sorry, I said head, but that's going to be the size of, of the, uh, the, the brim of my cap. I'm going to come down then from that point. There's, there's the top of my body, so here's going to be the top of my torso. So now we're going to go through the same exercise. I'm going to take this part down to match the... Uh, uh, my final si finest, final size on the hat is about seven eighths of an inch, so I'm going to take this down to just a little bit less than an inch. And again, my the top of my snowman is going to be there, so I'll come up in this area somewhere up, up here and, and go down. So that's the, that's the diameter of my, my hat brim. And now the, the diameter of my head is just over three quarters of an inch. So we'll just take that down. Um, like I said the head on this one, I, I, did, I didn't like the head being that tall. Because you know, when you round the head over, it makes the hat look like it's just sitting on top of the head. So I, I prefer something more like this, where the head is not really curved over that much at the top. It's curved down here around the throat, but it, it, it's just tapered slightly like it's fitting up inside the hat. So I'm going to take the... Uh, Take the head down. I'll show you about three. It's about yeah, just uh, about you know, seven sixteenths. So I'll mark that. That's going to be the, be the bottom of my hat band, or the hat hat brill, not band hat 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 uh, brim. And we'll just come down with with the spindle gouge because my my. Uh, bidet, or my, uh, I could use a parting tool. In fact, I'll show you that. I'll show you a parting tool. I haven't really talked about a parting tool. Um, this, this is a, a, a parting tool. It's, it's just th this, this one is, is the same thickness through the, whole, through the, the body. Some of them are, are called diamond tools. They're a little bit wider here in the center part. But I'll just go down and, and get that head down. Now, 
just remove some of that wood in there to get the, get the, the head down. And, and basically what I'm doing, I'm just making some clearance. So I have clearance when I start rounding the torso over. I've got some clearance to round that over into. Now I don't want to go down to my three quarter inch uh, final diameter here because this is going to give me tear out and I want to have, have room to take away that tear out and be left with nice clear wood. So I'm going to set the caliper to, oh, about 13, 16. It looks like I've already got it too small. I'm already, I'm already, well, and I'm, down, I'm down to uh, three, over three quarters, it's uh, 13 sixteenths. So that, that gives me, a, I've still got an eighth of an inch then, no, a sixteenth of an inch of tear out. So it may, may end up taking the head just a little bit smaller. So, so I got the di diameters of my various things. I haven't done anything with the hat up here yet, but that's my hat brim right there. So now we come in, at the, I want to I make, just, just by eye, just mark the center of where I want the widest part of the body and the center between that line and that line to where I want this, the widest part of my torso. Now, I don't want to make a real dark line there because I've got to be able to remove that line. I could turn it away or sand it away, but I don't make, don't make it any darker than necessary. So, so now coming down here, I want to round this off, but I, want, I don't want to round it off clear down to the metal on my thing. I did damage my tool. Uh, plus, I want to have a nice flat, have a, leave a flat spot there for the snowman to sit on if you want to set it on a shelf instead of hanging it up on the tree. So I'm going to round this over, and it's not going to be a complete circle going down to center. It's just sort of just a general curve with a radius that's, that's considerably larger than the, than the height of the, uh, the height of the, the sphere. So again, I'll just, just knock off. Need to raise the tool rest up. Okay, so we're going to start by just take, just knocking off the corner. Now, see, some people when you're making making uh, beads start out like this. And, and then come around. Now to do that, we need to, need to you know, get the cutting edge into the wood. And when you finish up here, if you're going all the way down into a, uh, to a V-cut, you need to end up with the tool directly pointing to the center of rotation. So that, that involves uh, you know, moving the handle over and raising the handle, more, more, more movements involved there. But since I'm not going down into uh, a V, I don't have to worry about messing anything up on that side over there. So with this, I can just, instead of starting over like this and have to move the handle around, I'm just gonna come over here, here and just, just sort of ease that, that, the side of the wing right there. And I'm just gonna ro just rotate the handle in. I don't have to swing it around so much. I can just rotate the handle, keeping the bevel you know, tangent to my surface that I'm cutting. So I can make a nice, clean, continuous cut there. Okay. Let's take, take away some of this here. Okay, and then we'll start the same way over here. Just round over. Now here, since I am going down into a V-cut, I've got to rotate the tool right, raise. I've got to move the handle over, rotate it, and end up with, the, with the, the tip of the tool vertical down in that V. Okay, come over here to get rid of some of that material in there that's in the way.
Okay, so tool rest just a little bit too high. And then you feel I've got a little bit of raised area in there. We can clean that up later, but I, I don't. I guess I'll still dress that up once I get this tier. We'll come back and, and re redress that. So this, this spindle gouge has got, you know, like I say, it's, it, it, is, it has about a 35 degree bevel. So it allows me to get down in that much tighter spot where if I have more of a conventional grind, like on here, my clearance angle is, is going to be considered a bit, a bit larger and it's going to restrict me of how tight I can make that, that, that V in there, how, how much of a V I can get into. So that's what the, be the benefit of having the spindle gouge with the uh, with the, with a, a, a more acute angle on it allows you to get down into a tighter spot, and then you can also even take a, a smaller one. With this, it's even a bit more acute. This is a three eighths steel. This is a quarter inch steel. Allows me to get down in there, and then you can always use your skew. If if you have trouble, if you, if you don't have the the clearance angle with with your spindle gouge, you can always use your skew and come back and just touch up the, the, uh, the very bottom down there and, and get, get it cleaned up to give you a nice, a nice uh, point down or sharp bottom of that V. So I've got just a little bit of a, I guess I'll dress that up a bit. You got a little bit of a shoulder right right there it's not this this i want to match that curve there so i need to take a little bit more off of that shoulder right there okay still got a little bit of a raised area right and you just feel it i can feel it more than i can see it but there's just a little bit of a raised area it's just stop and flatten that out a little bit take off that little raised area there okay that's good and i can feel that that's that's more gentle there i got a bit of a sharp it gets abrupt sort of a change right there so i just got a little bit of a high spot right there to take off Okay. Now I could come back. I'm going to try to do this without doing sanding. So I'm just going to come in just just with the just enough to take that line out. And I left a little bit of a flat, so I need to turn that off. There. Okay, so now the head, and I said with, I, I left, when I was doing with the parting tool on the head, you can see, so you can see the difference in the, the smoothness of the cut there, the, what this was done with the peeling cut, see how much, how much is torn out. So we need to take that, get rid of that torn area, clean up the bottom of the hat bill, or the, the hat brim, and then just, just taper the top of the head in very slightly. Now I'm, I'm rolling it over the edge of the the gouge I'm, I'm just cutting down here and then as I get into the bottom of the hat brim I don't want to leave it over there and pull the fibers out so I'm rolling it completely over to get into the bottom of the where the hat the head and the hat brim contact okay and I want to round over the bottom of the head Okay. 
make sure I don't get any tear out in there. The bottom of the hat bill looks pretty good. I like to undercut the bottom of the hat brim just slightly, um, just to give it more of a shadow line. Yeah, this is where you might need to uh, get a place where you've got this little skew. This is a, a, a skew that I made. It's just a, a piece of quarter inch uh, high speed steel round and I filed a, uh, a, a skew shape on it. So I'm just going to come in there, get the bevel on there and be able to get that point to get up in there and clean out that little Okay. Okay, and you decide what kind of hat you want. Uh, sometimes the uh, the wood tells you what it wants to do, but if you get a big chip out, and then you have to alter your design. But we'll just go for a, a sort of a flat brimmed hat with a, a Abe Lincoln type uh, crown. I'm looking for the, uh, the, the di outer diameter of the crown then being about the same size as the top of the head so it looks like the hat fits the head. And I want to be careful I don't run into the, into the, into the brim of the hat because it'll, it'll easily pull a chip out of there. If you, if you go in undercut and make a little bit of a V in there then when you come back like this It'll, it'll, that fiber will just fall away and you don't even have to come up and touch the brim of the hat, or the, uh, yeah, the brim of the hat. Yeah, that looks about the right size. Come up here and we'll make a little bit of a stove pipe, like Abe Lincoln. Make it about that tall. And we'll get rid of this waste wood. You can take this down to about oh, a quarter inch or so. So now if, you, if you're going to be doing any sanding or finishing, this would be a time that you'd go ahead and, and sand it and, uh, and put whatever finish you want to put on it. But this one just going to leave raw just to show you that you can do it fairly quickly. I think I like that. I think I'll take the hat down a little bit more. Just the hat just looks like it's a little bit too large for the, for the size of the head. Make sure I didn't score up the bill doing that. Yeah, it's still smooth. Okay, so there's, there it is. Like I say we'd, we would uh, go ahead and sand it now and finish it if we wanted to do that, but I'll just go ahead and part it off and, uh, and this will be a one that can be painted. So I'm going to uh, just get this down and part it off. And I just sort of nibble away at it. I'm not pushing a, a straight cut all the way in. And just sort of nibble away at the, get down to the very end. And then just convince it that it really wants to come apart right there. Now I don't want to get any tear out on this one. Well, no, you can, I can still get a little bit on this one because I'm going to be putting an ice screw on the top of the hat. So it won't hurt if it. So then you can easily finish off that, uh, the top. I got a little bit of a nib up there. We can clean that off with a knife.
and then leaving the top of the hat smooth like that, it makes it very easy to just to finish sand it, finish sanding it by hand. Got a few rings there and torn out, so I got some 150 paper. Before I get too far, I want to mark the center there. I should have done that before I uh, sanded away the remnants of it. So, so we'll still got a little bit right, centers right there. Okay, this is 180. Okay, that should do. Good, we got the mark there. Got a, a number of drill bit. I, it's, uh, I don't know exact size. It was a size that I picked out of an index to match the size of my screw eye. And that's deep enough for the screw eye. Again, the screw eyes, you can get, get the screw eyes at our, at our, at our uh, store that that's, uh, sponsors us with our classroom at Peachtree Woodworking Supply in Norcross. That's Georgia. And I put the screw eye in. Okay, and there I had a had a piece practicing making beads and, and, uh, and V-grooves. Didn't do any coves on here, but I practiced my beads and V-grooves. If it works out, you got an heirloom. If it doesn't, you got firewood. You know, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.